everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Acts chapter 3, verse 3, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, and James chapter 5, verse 1. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Lord God, for all you've done. Thank you for your many blessings upon us, God. Lord, we give you all the praise and glory. God bless your children today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Acts chapter thir- 13, verse 3. After Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. All right, and so this is speaking of um, Saul and Barnabas being sent off um, to do the will of God. They had already been fasting and praying and and spending time with other believers. And then God commissioned Saul and Barnabas um, to go off and do his work. And so the thing the Holy Spirit was showing me was that when we are um, around other believers, and we're sharpened in the word, it's easier to hear from God, right? When you're in that fasted state, if you're trying to seek God and you want to know what he wants you to do, fast, pray, join with other believers, um, go find a prayer group. You know, um, my church holds prayer on Saturday mornings. And so, you know, the whole church, you know, is, is welcome to come. And so we just all pray for an hour. And so, um, I I go to a pretty big church, but, um, it's the, the scriptures that they put on the, the board, um, are the overhead thing are um, the prayers that we pray together. Um, and, you know, as a corporate, as like a body, um, praying for the church, um, and then praying specific points. And then we also take the prayer request and we pray the prayer request. And then we also, as the spirit leads, you know, just pray as we go through and, and the Lord can lead you to a place like that, where you can go and pray. I know when I didn't have that, I actually used to, um, go to IHOP ministries on the linen Lord. They they are always praying on there. And so fasting and praying can reveal what God it is, God is doing in your life and speaking into your life and being around other believers can help you as well to stay sharp, right, in the word of God. And so remember, the bridegroom is not with us right now. Christ has not come yet. So we are to be fasting and praying for his coming. Um, when he was with us, he they didn't fast, right? So now that he's not with us, we need to fast um, as he is still to come. And so, yeah, that was what he was showing me about Acts chapter 13, verse 3. And then Hebrews chapter four, verse 12, for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joint and of marrow and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. All right. And so um, first thing we need to remember is Christ is the word. All right. He is the word made flesh. So um, when we're speaking of the word, we're speaking of Christ um, altering us from this um, sin state. Right. As as the word is going through us, it is cutting things away. OK, so let's just look. We've done a word study on this about a year or two ago, but uh, no, I want to say it's like a year or so ago. Um, and so let's just quickly go through the key words of this one. For the word of God is living and active. That word active means operate, effectual, powerful. It's operative, effectual, powerful. So it is actually doing things, right? It's a lot. It's not dead, right? It, it's actually making change. It is confronting things, right? Um, it says sharper than 
um, any two-edged sword. So I had to kind of look up two-edged sword because I never really looked it up. Um, sharper means, comes from the word tomos. It means to cut by a single stroke. All right. And so um, when you're cutting by a single stroke, it, it's it's opposed to hacking, right? You, when, when the knife is dull, you kind of got to hack or rub and go back and forth. No, the word is very sharp. It's very precise. It's going to cut exactly where it needs to cut. Right. When he says um, thou shall not commit adultery, there is no questioning about what is adultery. Right. There's no questioning about um, whether or not you are in right standing or not. Right. Because the word of God is alive and active. If you have something inside of you, it's going to reveal it. It's going to confront it. It's going to cut it. Right. And, and you want it to cut it away. Cutting away can be painful, right? But we need to cut things away that are not of God in our lives. Um, it's, and then that two-edged sword means that both sides of the sword are sharpened, right? So um, if there's one cut, then, you know, it doesn't matter which side of the sword hits you, <laughs> right? It's It's going to cut it away as opposed to like, say something that stabs. So if something is stabbing into something, it's just going to leave a hole, right? But if it's a two-edged sword, if there's any pressure at all, it's going to cut that thing away. And so that's how we need to be with the word. We need to let the word confront us, let it come in and cut us. Don't be averse to, um, hearing the word or offended by the word, right? We need to let that word come in and offend some places and let those places go, right? Um, if it does offend us, if it does confront something and makes us feel some kind of way, we need to be willing to release, right? And and not hold on to that thing. And so it says two-edged sword, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit. So that soul is psyche, meaning breath of life, um, seat of feelings, desires, affections, and aversions. So it's the place where we're, we're making those decisions, right? And, and God is cutting away at that area. Um, and so we need to make a decision, right? We need to release that thing. We need to say, hey, you know what, Lord, if you don't want it, I don't right? We need to be willing and, and open to his cut. And so, and that could be people, places, things, the way you treat things, the way you think about things. Yeah, we need to be willing to let it go if the word of God confronts it. And so it says the breath of life, seat of feelings, desires, affections, and aversions, that's soul. And then of spirit means the vital principle animate with the vital principle which animates the body um power in which we decide so it's it's cutting away um our ability to to hold on to a thing and 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 say oh well I'm gonna reason that this is this there's that no when the word comes in it, it's taking you out of that equation right it is cutting you away from it and saying here is what God sees right it's kind of like turning on or off a light um or um yeah so like when you're in a room so say the room is really really junky it's it's much easier to ignore the junk if the light is off right in your sleep but once you turn that light on you're confronted with all the junk in the room so it's like you have to clean it up you can't just let it be like that so um and in and you're wondering why you're tripping in the dark right because there is junk in there so it says um and of marrow and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So it's not only going to confront, it's going to confront it and, and remove you from the situation of deciding whether it was good or bad. It's going to do that for you. And then it's going to also reveal 
um, your heart's intention. Why? Because if you want to hold on to that thing, that's very revealing, right? It's very revealing at where your heart truly is and who is your Lord. It, it's going to reveal because if you're unwilling to let go of that thing, even though God is saying, let that thing go, forgive that person, do that. You're revealing who the Lord is in your life. Is it you or is it God? right? It, it's going to, it's going to reveal the intentions of your heart. All right. So let's read that whole word again for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit of joints and of marrow and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. All right. And so we know that the first verse was talking about praying and fasting. So God is wanting us to come closer to him, to pray, to fast, to seek him out, um, be around other believers um, so that we can stay sharp in the word of God. Why? Because the word of God is sharp and we don't need to let the word of God go dull in our lives. We need to be constantly active towards pursuing the word of God. All right. And so the third verse was James chapter five, verse one, come now you rich weep and howl for the miseries that are coming upon you. Christ is soon to come right? So those who are, are already rich, who have chosen not to be cut, they've chosen not to confront, they have chosen not to come upon this fasted state, come upon this chastened state. If, if you choose not to, then you're rich now. You be rich, right? What does the word of God say about being rich? Um, in, in Revelation chapter 3, it talks about being, you're actually poor, right? You're actually, actually pitiable, blind, naked, right? And, and, and there is a way to repent from that. There's a way to come back from that. But if you choose not to repent and you choose not to turn into that chastened state, that holy state, that, that state in which the word can confront you, then you be rich now because this is what's going to happen to the rich. It says, come now you rich, weep and howl for the miseries that are coming upon you. You're going to invite misery upon yourself. It may not look like it now, but the word of God will come to pass, right? So allow the cut now, allow the chastening now, allow the, the fasted state now so that later you don't have to come upon that misery, right? Put yourself in the, in the misery of a fasted state, right? Yeah, it, it can feel miserable sometimes when you're fasting. Thing. It can feel um, miserable when you are cutting things away, but do it now on this end with the word of God, rather than being placed in a situation where you come upon the miseries and the test of the world, right? It says, come now, you rich, weep and howl for the miseries that are coming upon you. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for these scriptures that you have given us. Help us to fast and pray, Lord God. Help us to be around other believers so that we can stay sharp in the word of God. Help us to, to fellowship with one another and be sent and go and do your will as we wait on you, Lord God. Help us to allow your word to confront us to, to to deal with the things that we are unwilling to deal with, Lord God. Let our heart's intentions be revealed to us and help us to go forth and do your will, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I can be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 
All right, you guys, if you pray that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth, meaning he is going to show you the way and he's going to bless your path. Um, one of the best ways to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit is to sit down, read your word, chew on that word and talk to God. Learn how to wait on his reply. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So continue to seek his face and wait on him to begin to speak back to you. He is not going to lead you astray. He's only going to lead you into the will of the father. The Holy Spirit will. Um, also Christ wanted us to be sure and forsake not the fellowshipping of ourselves, right? Make sure you go out, find a church home. The Holy Spirit will lead you, um, and, and find that church home, be around other believers so that you can stay sharp in the word of God. Um, be baptized in the name of the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Um, and also go out and tell other people about Christ and what he's done in your life. Amen. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his children his peace. Take care.